In this video, we're going to go through how to easily spice up your edits in Premiere Pro and After Effects. If, like myself, you're primarily a video editor, I know After Effects can be a scary place to be, but I promise you, if you can edit video, you can pull most of this off. We'll just get into some light After Effects geekery towards the end. Let's open up Premiere Pro, and after you create a new project, we've got this clip right here of the goat. Now, I'm going to just right-click and new sequence from this clip. So we've got this whole thing right here. So I'm just going to chop up where I want this to be, let's say around there. Let me just delete the audio. Now for safety, I'm going to duplicate that by pressing option and dragging up. And then I'm going to right click and replace with After Effects composition. So we're going to bring this into After Effects and do some stuff that are just easier to do in After Effects. First of all, I'm going to double click on the actual video and I'll get this second screen right here and come up to my rotoscoping tool. This is how we separate Steph from the background. So you kind of just do that. When it's green, it's actually selecting it. If you press option, you get this red brush. So you can kind of just refine it that way. And on the second screen, I can see what's been outlined. So after you've done this, you can spend as much time as you want on it. You just press on the freeze and that will just freeze everything in place. After that's done, you'll end up with something like this with a transparent background. If we turn on transparency, you can see that it's just cut out. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that. And on the second layer, we're going to turn off. If you go into your effects right here, we're going to turn off the roto brush. So what we've done here, we've separated the subject from the background. And now we can apply some effects to the background. Now, all the effects I'm going to be using are here in effects and presets. But I use a plugin called FX Console, which is a free one, which it helps you just pull up effects a lot faster. Now, the first effect I'm going to add to the background is going to be just black and white. We're just going to make that black and white just so we've got the subject popping off. So just the default settings right here are fine. Second one I'm going to add is going to be radial blur. And this way things get a bit more interesting. Can you see that? And we'll mess with the amount right here. And as you can see here, it just adds a bit more interest. What we're going to do is we're going to just reduce the amount. Let's go with about seven, just about there. Now I'm going to add some more stuff to the background just to give you some ideas of what you could possibly do. Let's add some CC lens. Now the default here is crazy, but I just want a little, little curve on the edges. So 500 is flat. Let's add 450 is probably where we want to be. If I turn it off and on, you can see the difference here. And then I'm going to add some chromatic aberration. And what that does is it separates some of the colors here. So let me just start with zero here. And then I'm just going to mess with the colors a tiny bit. So I'm pressing down command and dragging across just to get more precise adjustments. So something like that, I think I like. And we're going to stop there for the background. And already, as stage one of the effect, we've got something really interesting here. And if I save that and go back into Premiere, what happens is that will update Premiere. And as you can see, I've got the regular clip and then it'll switch into that part right there. So when he makes that movement right there, boom. I would love to be able to just emphasize that. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on to the first layer if you press S, your scale comes up. So I'm going to keyframe that because that's where I want to end up. And move a few frames behind, keyframe that as well. And in between, I'm going to resize that, and make them a bit bigger, like maybe around there. And then you can play with the keyframes here and select these and press F9. And that will just easy, easy keyframes. Right, so we've got something like really quick there. Bam, All right? Now for some After Effects special sauce. I'm gonna create a shape layer and draw this circle. Next, I'm simply gonna animate the scale so it gets larger and out of frame. On that shape layer, add an echo effect and adjust the timing to preference. These are the settings I use for this example. Now we're gonna add a fast blur effect to the circle so we get this faded wave warp. Now we're gonna head over to the background layer and add a displacement map. And under displacement map layer, we're gonna select the circle shape layer we just created. Change this option to luminance 
and then adjust the vertical and horizontal displacement to preference. This way we get this wave warp behind the subject and I'm going to time it so it ties in with the scale animation. This all looks cool, but let's add some camera movement. We're going to add an adjustment layer and any effects we add here are going to affect all the layers below it. Next, let's add a transform tool to the adjustment layer and animate a zoom in. Make sure you press F9 to easy ease the keyframes to keep things smooth. Once you're happy, select the keyframes and go to where you want the zoom out to happen and paste the reversed keyframes. Next, we're going to add the camera lens effect to that same adjustment layer and add that camera focus effect. I'm just going to use the default settings and just animate the blur radius. The last thing we're going to add is some fake handheld movement by adding a simple wiggle expression to the anchor point of the transform effect. Simply hold down option and click on the stopwatch and type in the wiggle effect with these parameters. Save the session in After Effects and let's head over to Premiere Pro. Now to make this transition a bit more interesting, I'm going to add an adjustment layer right over this chains and add a chromatic aberration effect. I'll add some simple animations and these are the settings I used and we've got a cool transition into our After Effects comp. At this point of the video, we see a camera flash, so I'm going to kind of play into that. I'll add an adjustment layer right over the camera flash and add a brightness and contrast effect and animate the brightness just to add to that flash. And now to tie this all together, we're going to add some sound effects. I've picked this high energy track and I'm going to time it so there's a strong downbeat at the transition point and add a low pass filter to the first section so it sounds a bit muffly. Next, I'm going to add a riser, a sub hit, a lens zoom effect, an old school camera flash sound. And leading up to the camera flash, I'm going to add these camera shutter sounds. And under that, I'm going to add that same sub hit. And to add the cherry on top, I'm going to add some crown noises. And we're good. 